In the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. For me, sin is to be separated from God. Holiness is to be attached to God and to be separated from everything that is not of God. Since we are created by God, we begin our lives in holiness. That is, we are born with all God's attachments, and that means that we are born with all of His goodness, for God is good. And at the moment of our formation, He looked at each one of us and said, It is good. And because of that, it is holy, or we are holy from the start. I believe that God took a piece of Himself and moulded into a thing of beauty, you and I, and including every other aspect of His creation. That is why He said, it is good. That is why, from our moment of formation, we were clothed in holiness. He is the Master Builder, and He built each one of us and everything else. Therefore, being in and part of his image, the logical conclusion is that from the moment of our inception, we were clothed in holiness. When you looked at your newly born child, you no doubt felt the same sentiments and emotions that are God's. That is, your child is beautiful, and you and your child are going to be happy forever. God, too, looked at His creation, us, and felt that He was going to be happy with us, and we would be in love with Him forever, that we would enjoy an intimate, loving relationships, He in us and we in Him. Could it be said that from the time of our birth, somehow we stepped onto a downhill spiral, as babies, we soon learnt to scream for what we wanted. This seemed to work very well, for we learnt to scream for food, for attention, and if that didn't work and was not immediately forthcoming, we learnt to throw tantrums, scream and cry. Detachment from God was set in motion. Slowly, one moves from holiness to sinfulness, Creatures of want and therefore self-centeredness. As I grew older, I became good at defining my wants as needs, thereby justifying my greed, but simultaneously detaching myself from God. Sin grows from little beginnings. What the eye sees suddenly becomes a want and something to be possessed. God, in fact, says to Cain, Sin is lurking at the door. Its desire is for you, but you must master it. Unless one masters it, the separation from God becomes more permanent. I have a mistaken belief that if I pray to get everything that my eyes see and which I want to possess, God will answer my prayer. I am disappointed when these prayers are not answered. For, in the first place, such prayers are to false gods, because they are ones that are of self-indulgence and do not qualify as desiring God. Secondly, God created us so that we might be His instruments of praise and worship, and that is where all our wants, joy, and happiness finds fulfillment. God gives us that which is more beautiful and lasting than the wasteful things that distract us and entice us not to fulfillment but into disappointment. Being creatures of God, we have automatically entered into a covenantal relationship with God. This is attachment to God and to holiness, as opposed to sinfulness which is detachment from God, egocentric and doing things my way instead of God's way. A covenantal relationship is more than listening and obedience. It is a union of love from which listening and obedience naturally have their existence. It is to be obedient to the lifestyle of union 
with not only God, but also with other people and everything that makes up creation as we know it, and beyond. It is not to possess anything, but to share everything. It is to prevent injury to another. And if another is injured, to do my best to bandage those wounds in whatever form they are found. When one stands in a shadow, one might look up and see the light that caused the shadow. One then mistakes the place where one is as being the light. For instance, I believe that because I speak words of righteousness, that I am righteous in my behavior. But everyone that knows me sees that I don't always live up to those words that I use. My words are not congruent with my action. St. Paul bemoans this fact in his letter to the Romans in chapter 7. And so I continually fall from the place of holiness and in the light into the place that is sinful and in the shadow. In fact, Jesus identifies me as a goat in St. Matthew's Gospel. The story of Jonah has many lessons. In one of the lessons, I see him as trying to be the judge of God. God, you are too loving, is what I hear jo Jonah saying. And God is indeed loving. When the Ninevites repent and turn to God, God doesn't destroy them, but is in fact happy that they have listened to him. It is said that there is joy in heaven when one sinner repents. But Jonah is upset. He wants to see the people eradicated from the earth and there display, thereby displays his unloving self. He forgets that to forgive is a product of love. Therefore, Jonah is in fact just as sinful as the Ninevites. It is he himself that needs to repent. God is the only judge, and people are not to assume God's role in this regard. On the contrary, people must learn the role of forgiveness, which is contained in the commandment, love your neighbor. By preventing myself from forgiving my neighbor, I, in fact, cause my own happiness. It is this sorrow that prevents me from enjoying peace. Confer how unhappy Jonah was because God forgave and did, did not destroy the people of Nineveh. Jonah's unhappiness arose from his own sinfulness. Using the words of John the Baptist, Jesus' voice echoes around the world. Repent is the clarion call. Repentance is to reverse the horrible habits that have made me detach myself from God and holiness. It is to reverse the downward spiral into sin and instead to walk in the light, the lighted path that is the Jesus way. Repentance requires of me firstly to sit silently in total surrender to God. In that silence I might hear God say, Go to Nineveh, that is, go to my heart, for it has been darkened and contaminated by my sin. I shut the door of my heart and kept God out and sin inside. I must persevere with recognizing my sinfulness and repenting with a view of walking in the light and not to run away from Nineveh and so to engage what is wrong and sinful in my heart and discarding that from my life. There in my heart I find those things from which I must turn away. It is frightening to see what I, must be, what I have become and how much there is from which I must turn away. Repentance is the catalyst to change me from judge to forgiver, from self-centeredness to grace, from immorality to justice, from disinterestedness to compassion. St. Paul in his letter to the Ephesians exhorts us to live as children of light, for the fruit of 
the light is found in all that is good and true. Repentance is like rebirth. It is to return to our origins of holiness in which God created us. It takes us beyond the darkness into which we have drifted and redirects us into the light of Christ. It is here where we can once again feel that freedom of spirit in which our spirits and God's spirit can dance hand in hand. When we are holding hands like that, pure joy embraces us, and we can feel the resurgence of life that is beautiful and life can blossom and grow. It is like skipping and playing ring, a ring of roses in the park. God is holding our hands. I think this is what Jesus means when he says the kingdom of heaven is within you. Yes, its dwelling place is our hearts, because God is there. Now we can truly say that our lives have been a success, for we conquered our own devils, and God has turned each one of us into a new creation. New in the sense of becoming that which we were always meant to be, from the moment of our conception, instruments of praise and worship. But as I say, my desire to do it, my way, got in the way, and I've strayed like a lost sheep. Repentance, God's forgiveness, God's love brings me back to the beginning, where holiness began, and which is life in eternal. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen.